Welcome to the second episode in our very first season of Upgrade My PC, please. If you missed episode one or the video explaining what the series is all about, then be sure to check those out. I'll link them in the video description below. So on last week's episode, we had the first five PCs all in need of various upgrades, and you, the viewers, voted Hayden's CAD box the most worthy of receiving the proposed upgrades. The voting was seriously close, and shockingly, the CAD box beat Dakota's Silver Shadow by a single vote. Just one vote. That's pretty harsh, and I really wish we could afford to offer Dakota an upgrade package as well. Sadly, though, we are stretching the budget as it is for now. Still, Dakota won't be walking away empty-handed, and neither will the other three contestants, as all four runners-up will be receiving a Rainbow Six Siege game code from Ubisoft. Speaking of Rainbow Six Siege, make sure you tune into the APAC Pro League from September 12th to see the top Siege teams in ANZ take on the best teams in Asia. I'll provide the link in the video description so you can watch the live streamed matches. As for Hayden, we'll be ordering his new parts from PC Case Gear, and they'll be sent out this week. PC Case Gear put their hand up right away to support the series and offer free shipping for all the Australian-based contestants, so a big thanks to them also. Once Hayden's installed all the shiny new hardware into his system, I'll get him to provide us some updated photos of the refurbished rig, and then I'll show them off to you guys in a special feature at the start of next season. Also, don't forget to vote each week, as that will place you in the running to win some cool prizes, and those will be global giveaways. Although we can't afford to expand the upgrade series globally just yet, we can still offer you the chance to win some very cool gear, no matter where you are. Speaking of which, later on in the video, we do have a Seagate Barracuda 4TB hard drive to give away, thanks to Seagate. That will be going to one lucky winner who voted on last week's episode, so if you did indeed vote, make sure you stick around for that. Alright, so once again, we have five PCs all in need of various upgrades, so let's go check them out. It's amazing how much of a statement a case can make. The Graphite Series 320T comes in one of two options. Black, which is pretty typical, or what Corsair calls Rebel Orange. And this is the option Ryan chose, and I have to say, a very nice choice. Ryan built this system from the ground up, and it began life with an FX4100, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and the Radeon HD 7770. The PC's been named Dortmunder after the first Alliance Cruiser showcase in episode 1 of Firefly, Ryan's favourite sci-fi series. Damn, I also loved that series. Uh, it died far too young. It still hurts even today, and it was something like 14 years ago. Man, do I feel old. <laughs> Anyway, today Ryan's PC packs a slightly more powerful FX8350 along with the R9270X, which is a pretty big step up from the 7770. There's also 16 gigabytes of DDR3, which is a shame as we won't actually be able to carry that over to any modern platform. As you can probably tell from the case, Ryan enjoys Doom, but he also likes to play CSGO and PUBG, neither of which play particularly well on an FX series CPU. Getting right into it, this is what I propose. Since Ryan has used a lot of AMD hardware in the past, and right now in terms of value, Ryzen represents the most bang for your buck, I've decided on the Ryzen 3 1200. For the games Ryan wants to play and the class of GPU we're upgrading to, I think Ryzen 3 makes a lot of sense here, and it can of course be upgraded down the track. Then filling out that mid-tower is the MSI B350 Gaming Plus with 8GB of memory, and with 4 DIMM slots on offer here, it can be easily upgraded in the future. Then finally, the GTX 1063 GB will take things to the next level and push frame rates over 60 FPS at 1080p for a nice, smooth experience at all the latest titles. Fellow Aussie Brayden is rocking along with Oli McOld, a hand-me-down PC from his sister many years ago. The only upgrade made since receiving the PC includes a GTX 660 and a larger 500GB hard drive. Short of that though, Brayden hasn't had the funds for any big upgrades. It sounds like Braden does a little bit of work in Lightworks, but mostly likes to play games such as Rocket League, Overwatch, and CSGO. And while very fun, popular games, I assume they're mostly played out of necessity, as they aren't the most demanding titles. Right, so for our younger viewers out there, the Core 2 Duo E8600 was a high-end flagship dual-core processor released way back in 2008 by Intel, and at the time it was a bit special. Today, though, it runs Rocket League like Bicycle League, and no matter how hard it pedals with just 2GB of RAM, it's going to be a jerky ride. 
Because we're coming from so far back, I'm going to recommend the Pentium G4560 for this one, opposed to Ryzen 3. In terms of pricing, it's much the same, but we're going about things a little differently for this one. Now, you might be confused by the relatively high-end Z270 board from ASRock, but the idea here is to provide Braden with a set of components that will allow him to make further upgrades in the future. Dropping in a Core i5 or a Core i7 perhaps down the track will give this system a new lease on life. Meanwhile, the GTX 1050 is a massive upgrade from the GTX 660, and that pretty much goes without saying. And finally, the thought of Braden running this newly refurbished system on an old 500 gigabyte hard drive was just too much for me. So we're putting down the angle grinder and getting out Kingston's A400, which will make for a super snappy boot drive. With this upgrade, Braden can certainly enjoy some new games. Can you feel the force? Well, Daniel can, and it's extremely weak, but still very power hungry. The Phenom 2 was AMD's last ditch effort before it all went horribly wrong for almost a decade now, all those years lost. Anyway, built back in 2008, Daniel has persevered, never losing faith in the force, though he has made a few upgrades along the way. The GTX 760 is one of the newer additions, and the system has gained a few case fans along the way. Daniel mostly uses the PC for gaming and he likes to play PUBG, but I mean, who doesn't, am I right? <laughs> Along with that, he also does like to play Mass Effect, Andromeda and Warframe. Having to play those titles on this PC would be enough to send anyone to the dark side. As dated as the core hardware is, the system itself is actually very neat and tidy, and I really like the case, power supply and storage. They're all very respectable. Speaking of storage, a PCI Express adapter card had to be installed in order to take full advantage of the SSDs, as the motherboard only supports SATA devices with a 3 gigabits per second throughput, and not the 6 gigabits per second that's required. He also tells me that the graphics card blocked most of the SATA ports on the board because they're not mounted at a 90 degree angle. So to stop Daniel going rogue, I propose the same Ryzen 3 upgrade option that we've already explored. This means dropping in the Ryzen 3 1200 on the MSI B350 Gaming Plus, along with 8GB of DDR4 memory. Then tackling the games will be the GeForce GTX 1063GB, and since Daniel only games at 1080p, this graphics card will be more than sufficient. And then finally, if Daniel can get his hands on the AM4 adapter for that 212 EVO, then I suggest doing so, as that will allow him to use that over the AMD Wraith Stealth Box Cooler. Okay, so this cute little computer affectionately named Reggie has a seriously long backstory, so I'll try and summarize it as best and quickly as I can. Basically, Reggie comes from humble beginnings with an Athlon 64X2 processor. After a very long wait, Dom eventually upgraded Reggie with a Phenom 2 X6 1045, but the ASUS motherboard threw up problem after problem, and after going through the RMA process not once but twice, Dom was forced into an emergency upgrade and that ended up being what you see here. So more of a downgrade than an upgrade. He went with the super budget orientated Athlon 5350, and that is on the AM1 platform. This isn't really a gaming PC though. Rather, its primary role is video work, and Dom's dream was to get a Ryzen CPU in there, and has been saving to make this happen. So once again, converting our 500 US budget into pounds, we end up with 390 pounds to play with. Since gaming isn't the priority here, and when Dom does game, he only plays Rocket League and Overwatch, and both of which play quite fine on an RX 550 using mild quality settings. So we're throwing everything at the CPU here to speed up the video encoding, and the best option is, of course, the Ryzen 5 1600. Since Reggie is built inside the cute little Element Gaming Atomic Mini ITX case, we've gone with the Gigabyte AB350N Gaming Wi-Fi motherboard with 8GB of memory. Down the track though, Dom might want to sell that 8GB of DDR4 and replace it with a 16GB kit, but for now the rendering times will be slashed dramatically even with 8GB. Old Gramps looks to be on its last legs, and surprisingly, Kelvin is reporting pretty bad stuttering in games such as Rainbow Six Siege, Just Cause 3, and more recently, the Destiny 2 beta. Kelvin was gifted this system many years ago by his uncle, and has done his best to keep it running ever since. Upgrades have included the GeForce GTX 1060 6GB graphics card, Samsung SSD, and the Cooler Master V750 power supply. We don't need a new graphics card for this rig as Kelvin has recently saved up and invested in a shiny new GeForce GTX 1060 and he now also has a nice SSD, a decent case and power supply so really we're going to dump the entire budget into the platform. 
This opens us up to the Ryzen 5 1600 on the ASRock B350 motherboard with 8GB of DDR4 memory. Kelvin does say he's very keen to give Ryzen overclocking a shot, so I propose we throw him the Deepcool Gamax 400. It's a very cost-effective air cooler and it should allow us to hit 4GHz should the processor be good for it. Then finally, the upgrade from the Core 2 Quad Q9300 to the Ryzen 5 1600 is massive. Should Kelvin win the upgrade package, he won't know himself. All right, guys, there's five potatoes, all in need of a good old fashioned overhaul. Your job is to let us know which one you think is most deserving of receiving our proposed upgrade package. To cast your vote, please follow the link in the video description. That'll head you over to the TechSpot forums. By signing up to the forums, commenting and voting, you'll go in the running to win some cool prizes and that will be a global giveaway for the viewers. Speaking of which, the winner from last week's episode is ET3D from Israel. Congratulations mate, you have an awesome 4TB Barracuda hard drive from Seagate coming your way. For now though, only people in select regions can enter their PC for the Upgrade My PC Please series. Remember, we're paying for all of this out of our own back pocket without the aid of sponsors. It's very costly and not that easy to put together. We hope to expand this series into more regions in the future, but for now at least, you can still get involved by voting and that'll give you the chance to win some cool gear. So far, in my opinion, we are off to a very good start. In this episode alone, we've given away a $500 US upgrade package, four copies of Rainbow Six Siege, and a Seagate Barracuda 4 terabyte hard drive. Not bad indeed. Finally, voting will be open till Friday night in the US, and that's Saturday Arvo for those of you here in Australia. I'll then announce the winner from this episode on next week's episode, which will be Tuesday at 5 p.m local time here in Australia, and at that point we'll have another five PCs to check out, we'll do it all over again. I'm your host Steve, go get voting. <laughs>